good evening, everyone. It is really good to be here. It's it's great to be here. Happy Independence Day. Um, and uh, we pray first and foremost that you know God will continue to lift Nigeria up to higher places. It's uh, it's my country, it, uh, and for many of you as well, I believe uh, it's where you're from. And um, you know, on days like this, we remember that God is still at work uh, in the in the country in our lives and um, yeah so that's a, that's a, that's a great start and the next thing is I would like to say massive massive thank you to the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship for inviting me to speak uh, you know I, I, it's it's just a huge privilege I was sharing recently um, with my own community over email as well as even on my own social media pages, right? That this is just, this is just amazing to be here. I have learned a lot um, for the sessions I've been able to attend. And I know that this community, you know, is really impacting lives positively. And then I would like to really just uh, say a big thank you to Mr. Adela Lishado for uh, the grace that, you know, God has deposited in his life and how he has impacted me personally it's just um he has i was writing that he has taken me everywhere and he has followed me everywhere that i needed to be um i remember just about nine years ago he was the chairman at my wedding flew all the way to Rio, and i have been following him since i met him when i was just a copper so um for me this is my mentor and uh my guide asking me to come and speak uh to his uh to, to a community that is very active in so uh, i do not take it for granted at all and i just want to say thank you so much sir and thank you to the entire team uh we will be going straight into the the session today if you are in a place where you can have a pen or paper, it will be good just so that you can take, you know, um, notes about your own thoughts. Maybe there's something that I am saying that triggers uh, a few things in your mind about your business or your career, something you can, you know, use later. I think it will be really good to kind of capture that down. Um, and then also if you have questions um, as well, so that you don't, um, you don't forget. There is quite a bit I would like us to cover today. Great. So I'm going to start with, um, you know, where are you from? This is a, this is an interesting story that I heard in church a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the pastor shared a story about how a young girl went to her mom and asked about, you know, where, 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 where are we from? And the mom was not quite sure about what the question is. Do you mean like where we come from, like our state of origin? And the, the girl was like, no, 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 humans. Where, where, where do we come from as humans? And so the mom said, oh, we, I mean, it's back to creation story. God created, you know, Adam. Uh, and, um, and then after that, God felt like, you know, it's not good for man to be alone. So he created Eve. So it was God that created us. You know, we are created in God's image and in, in God's likeness. So the, the girl said, OK, thank you, mommy. And then a few hours later, the girl went to her dad and uh, asked daddy the same question. OK, so daddy, where are we from? And again, the father was like, what do you mean, where are we from? And she said, oh, as human beings where do we come from and the father just said oh really okay it, it's it's all about evolution you know um man evolved from apes and uh and after many years you know homo sapiens uh came about and that's how that's how we came to be we evolved because we came from apes and it's about evolution so the girl was very confused and uh, she went back to her mom to say, well, mom, I think there's a bit of confusion. And she said, why do you say that? Because I asked that the exact same question about, you know, where do we come from? And he said, we came from apes and monkeys. And so the mom said, oh, OK, that's not a problem. I just explained to you where my side of the family came from. And daddy has explained to you <laughs> where his side of the family came from. <laughs> so, so <laughs> So that seems to be that, well, you have a choice to kind of figure out 
where you come from. And I want to relate that to, you know, where we talk about digital and how can we use digital to grow our business or to grow our career? I would say, which lens are you looking at it from? Where are you from? Because it is that journey that would determine the role that digital can play. I couldn't have predicted the video that, you know, uh, that was played. I actually didn't even know about the, that video that would be played. And it really just captures the fact that it is a journey, okay? Many years ago, thousands of years ago, hundreds of years ago, you know, uh, decades ago, we have seen industrial revolution really culminating in what we have today as the digital or the technology revolution leading into industrial, uh, the, the um, industry 4.0 or the future of work 4.0. So if we don't understand that journey, we will not be able to apply ourselves and the things that we are learning and the events that is happening around us today to maximize the opportunities that we have. So today's session is really helping you uh, fully grasp that journey, but at the same time, give you um, things you can implement or do in your daily life um, to get the most out of digital marketing, okay? And, and digital as a whole. So as I was saying, it's all about the journey. We need to understand where other people and businesses are coming from. If you want to leverage digital to grow your business, that means you have products and services that you are selling uh, to provide value to other businesses. Then you need to understand their journey. If it's your career, um, then that means you need to understand where the business you're working at or you intend to work at, where they're coming from, your boss, you know, the people, the teams that you're working with, what is their journey? Where are they coming from? And how can you connect with them you know, uh, at that level? The second part is how can you use digital tools to meet their needs? When we look at a lot of the changes happening around us today, it's digitalization that is uh, fast tracking those changes, whether it's with blockchain technology or artificial intelligence. I'll give a very good example. Uh, if you use Google Photos, and um, I've been using Google Photos for, for a while, and my images get backed up uh, into Google Photos. But for a long time, I didn't even pay attention to it. However, I think about two years ago, I looked at the app, opened up the app, and I realized that there's so many things that can happen even in a, in a very simple application like Google Photos. It sends um, collages or what, or like, you know, uh, combination of images that you've taken over a period of time, just to remind you where you were, you didn't even have to ask for it. Sometimes when I'm looking for pictures now, I just type in the date and it shows me all the pictures that were taken on that day. It recognizes my wife, it recognizes my kids. And so I can just say, show me pictures of you know my wife and it will pull all our pictures together. So really, it's just interesting how the world is changing around us and making things so, so easy. So. You have to, as part of that journey, really, it's understanding how digital tool can help you to meet your client's needs or your business needs or your organization needs. The third element is how can you support their growth through your products and services? And this is where like digital transformation starts to come into play. Um, when you look at your products today, uh, what can I do better? How can I leverage digital to make it easy and support the clients I'm serving uh, to make their lives easier, to help them grow. Because as they grow, you will also grow. And as a career professional, how can you offer value with your skills? Okay. Um, ultimately, it all comes down to how do I get patronage? How do I get payments? And how do I get pay increases? Really? That's that's how I've summed it up in terms of you know how can digital can we leverage digital to really get this growth. On the right hand side is just basically the you know signpost that I would use to help us uh, understand today's uh, um, today's uh, meeting. What objectives can we set? What channel strategies can we use? What content strategies can we use? 
how do we play out the media and some of the tactics that we can get as well. Of course, I am seeing this from a communication perspective, okay? So if it looks like, okay, this is all the kind of marketing and sales and stuff, yes, it is because I'm looking at it from a communication perspective. However, whether you have a product as a business owner or you are the product because you have the skills, ultimately what you are trying to do is communicate the value that you bring whether that's to get a job or to get clients. And so that's why I've chosen that lens to say, ultimately, how can we leverage digital to communicate the value we bring to help the people that we serve to grow, okay? So that's really, um, as a start, what we'll be looking at today. To go into a little bit more details, uh, I have been introduced, but maybe, okay, so I would not waste time introducing myself again. Maybe the only other part is I am your best email friend. If you're on my mailing list, you would know that. And I also run a digital consulting firm uh, called Passionless. And today for career professionals, I think this is leaning more towards career professionals. I will also be giving away uh, one of my Passionless bundles. It's a book, a course, interview with top professionals, um as well so um please kindly stay to the very end because i will share the coupon code and the link for you to be able to get uh to get that all right let's look at the digital landscape in africa just to kind of narrow it in we can we have heard about what is happening globally right in the digital landscape but how does that look in africa and then we'll drill down even further how does that look in Nigeria? So that it gives us a context to know how important or maybe not as important uh, this topic really is. The first thing is that in Africa, digital is growing, okay? Now, as a subset of that, we are a mobile first continent uh, with growing digital penetration. So when you are also thinking about digital, especially within an African context, um, it would serve you well to say, whatever we're doing, we have to prioritize uh, access through mobile just because that's where the game is, okay? Uh, we are very much mobile first. The second thing is data is still expensive. So digital is really built most mostly on connectivity, okay? So the more people have access, the, the, the easier it is to leverage digital tools. But data is still expensive compared to the average income. So we know that in uh, Central West Africa, for example, the cost of it's about a dollars uh, to get one gigabyte of data. Within that same region, um, the average daily income is about $4. So people spend about 25% of their average daily income to get access to the internet. That's the reality. Of course, when you look at the social economic classes, um, yes, if you have, if you're well to do, you're in the middle class, the, the numbers change drastic, drastically because you earn more, but still it doesn't uh, reduce the fact that you know, data is still quite expensive compared to the average income. And depending on who you serve or where you work, um, this feedback becomes important into how you actually create products and services. The third part is that digital media, which is paying to access or to reach people online, is a lot cheaper in Africa compared to developed economies. This is one of the biggest opportunities today if you're thinking about leveraging digital. It's like when you know TV started or radio or print. Over time, they became so expensive that it's only the big businesses that can leverage those. Like to run an ad on TV now, um, on say cable TV, it's very expensive. But with $3, you can run an ad on Facebook and get decent results. So it's really cheap today. And that is another point to take on board to say, now is a great opportunity for you to start thinking about how to leverage digital because over time, the big businesses are coming. They are also coming. Nobody will sit down if you're running a business and say, well, I can spend X amount on this channel, but I can spend you know, 1% of that on these other channel 
and I will still get very similar results. Everybody will go there. And the more people go there in terms of when demand is high and supply stays constant, uh, price would go up. So if you're a business, this is also a really good time to get your feet you know, into that space now, uh, thinking about how to really leverage digital to help your business and your career grow. Now, if we drill it a bit further down into Nigeria specifically, it tells a very interesting story. And the first one is that about half of Nigerians are online. A hundred million people are online. So quick question. The business that you have and the products and services that you sell, including your skills, do you think the people that would like to buy from you are within that 109 million? If the answer is yes, then digital becomes a very viable channel for you. Now, of course, it doesn't mean that they will buy online. We will get there. But just helping you to understand that this is not a small opportunity anymore. Any channel that can reach half of the population, and, will, and they have also put in, you know, when we say half of the population, who are this half of the population, right? So 176 million people have mobile phones or mobile connections, and people typically have more, more than one phone anyway. So that number will be slightly lower, but about half of the population, over 100 million, have access to the internet. And then a smaller number, about 15%, have access or are active users of social media. Again, this is another important point. Um, there are about 70 million people who are online who are not on social media. Worth thinking about as well. In your case, in your business, for you as an entrepreneur or as a, as a career professional, again, if your audience is within the 32 million, that's still huge. How many people do you need to buy from you to really expand and grow your business? A thousand, 10,000? That's small compared to the population that can really that you can reach with the message of your business and when we look at the demography uh 18 to 24 clearly um are very active but also 25 to 34 and then 35 to 44 so basically between 18 and 44 which is the people or we say 25 to 44 that have the disposable income that are um you know progressive media uh, that would leverage these digital platforms, they are online. And so this is just to really create that background as to can I reach people online and can it make a difference to my business, to your business, you know, to your career, but also to the businesses of the people that you are serving, okay? So after that, let's look at the four frameworks that will help you leverage digital for career and business growth. Now, this is where, you know, really we want to start looking at, you know, specific frameworks as well as examples. One thing to say here is that um, I am hoping that, you know, for today's session, you would, I would show you enough that you can build on. So we will not be able to tackle, you know, every channel, every tactics and all of those things. But these four things are things, or these four frameworks are frameworks that would not change. Facebook may come and go, um, or let me not say Facebook, a platform may come and go. Um, tactics can come and go. Things can change, algorithms can change, but these four things are unlikely to change, okay? And that's why I prefer to share this with you so that you have the freedom to innovate on how you execute or how you take them and how you apply them. That's why I said earlier that it would be good to have a pen and paper or somewhere you can take notes so that when something jumps out at you, you can take a note of it. And if, we, if when we come to Q&A as well, um, we can review that together. So the four frameworks, are the first one is the customer journey, okay? The second one is the media bucket strategy. The third one is the sales journey. And then the first one is content marketing, okay? And we'll take it one after the other. I will share with you, try and explain, and also give one or two examples um, as we go along. Okay, so the first framework is the customer journey. And we are going to start from here. 
everything that we want to use digital to do would have an end user, everything. What we're trying to do is, or what we're trying to figure out is, how is that end user going through their day and through their life and through their journey so that you can plug in at the right time, okay? Whether it's creating a new product, a new service, selling what you currently have, um, I, I, it doesn't matter. They are going through a journey, their life on a normal day. What can you do to really plug into that and ensure that um, it serves you and it serves them, okay? So this is the typical customer journey. You might have seen it if you're in marketing. You might have heard about the IDA framework. Um, this is just another one that I kind of prefer. it. Um, and what we know today is that consumers or customers don't go through this linearly, right? They don't go through it from just like this. They go through it in many different ways. They go from one stage to another stage, come back to a different stage. So for example, if I'm looking to, you know, hire an accountant or, you know, uh, to get an accounting firm, I can research, I can ask a friend, I can show interest, and then maybe the price is too much. And then I start all over again. So people just go around within this customer journey. However, it is still these different stages that they will be bouncing in and out of. And the first one is awareness. It's really simple. Do they know that you exist? That's what it is, right? They want to be aware of the problem they have, but also the solution that might exist. If they find a solution to a problem or they find someone that can show them the problem they didn't even know they had, then that can pick their interest to say, let me research that a little bit more. And then they will consider their options. They would eventually go with one and hopefully become repeat buyers because the person retains them. This works whether it's for a job or it's for a business or it's for a product or it's for a service. Okay, this is the customer journey. Now, a few questions I want you to consider um, as we kind of go through this is, the first one is, if I don't know you exist, how can I ever find you? Okay, now, digital has democratized, uh, if that's the right word, I can't pronounce it, but has made it easy for everybody to find everybody. Before, think about it. If the only way you can get to know about a business is because they advertise on TV, then any business that does not have the money to advertise on TV will not get known. Nobody will know them. And it was like that before. So now with digital, it means everybody should be able to do something that can help other people to find them, okay? So it's about being found, awareness. So if I don't know you exist, how can I ever find you? The second thing is, if I Google you and your business, what will I find? And this is where you start thinking about, okay, um, now I'm interested in something, but I just want to know what else is out there, okay? And so I Google, which is just, I search. If nothing comes up, um, it's likely that, you know, I might have second thoughts about, okay, um, Am I sure this is the right thing? Am I sure this is the right business or this is the right person? Um, which is a, uh, which is interesting. Which is very interesting because you have to be able to make you feel like when someone interacts with you and they get to know you and you know you show them what you carry, then they will um, then they will go with you. But a lot of people will make decisions before they even come close to interacting with you, just based on the things that they can find. Okay. The third thing is, if I visit your social media pages, what would they tell me about you? Now, at this point, I don't want you to think like on a personal note. It may not be your personal social media page. This could just be referencing whatever you are putting out there as your business or your career or what you want people to buy from you. So if I go and find you online on your social media pages, what would that tell me about you? All of these things, will direct people from awareness to interest to considerations to conversion to retention. They are the conversations that is happening that you don't even know about. But with digital, you can perfectly, okay, maybe not perfectly, but you can curate how the person or how the people will find you 
what they will find, when they will find it, so that it can help them in their decision making to do business with you, to employ you, to give you contract, to give you business, or to at least start a conversation with you. Okay, so we are going to do a very quick exercise. If you haven't done this before or in a while, I would like you to Google yourself. Okay, so um, you can sw sw switch over to, to, to the Google Chrome browser or any browser that you use and type in your name or your business name in Google. Um, and then I'll give you just a few minutes in that. And then we can put in the chat, you know, if you found anything, if you came up and if you if you would like to share what came up for you. So what did you find on your, uh, when you searched for yourself or when you Googled yourself? And I'm going to give you just about 30, 45 seconds to do that. Let's see. And by the way, this is a work in progress. This is just the start to say, um, I found my social profiles. Thank you. LinkedIn and Facebook. Good, good. Thank you. Anybody else? I actually found mine as well. LinkedIn was at the top and uh, followed by my website. Okay. So LinkedIn definitely is very strong. Um, I found my registered business. Beautiful. I found my LinkedIn and Twitter. Okay. Okay. I'm loving it. And did you like what he said about you? That's another point. Did you like kind of what he said? LinkedIn and Twitter as well. Okay. Nice. Found myself in my profession. Thanks, Howard. Thanks, Shagun. Yes. I liked it. Thanks, John. Thanks, Esther. Okay. My LinkedIn company page. No, very little information, Esther. Okay. Okay. I found my LinkedIn profile. Good, good. LinkedIn was great. Twitter, not so. <laughs> well, okay. We could copy and paste what's on LinkedIn and just go paste at least the, the initial part on Twitter as well, if you want to, right? Because people will connect both of those together anyway when they're searching. All right, beautiful. So that, that really is a good one, right? Because customers will research you where your business if you um if they want to work with you it's it's i think it's just so normal now that um we should expect that everyone would do it so every few months you should also just do it um and because you know that people will find you actually don't let me jump ahead of myself Ola williams you found yours as well on linkedin Baba today i found mine great great okay i found mine too and uh and it looks nice it looks decent uh it's still, still some work to do but it's not where it used to be <laughs> It's not what it used to be. All right, so this is framework number one, the customer journey, understanding that the customer is going on a journey. And if you want to work with them, be with them, serve them, you have to think about, you know, how would I make them find me? How would I pick their interest? How would I show up in a way that when they are considering who to work with, you know, I am in the mix. And then eventually, of course, they get to work with you. How would you then retain them? Okay, so that's framework number one, customer journey. Let's move ahead to framework number two. Oh, I'm just seeing another message. Let's see, let's see. Found my LinkedIn account. It was lovely, beautiful, Vivian. That's beautiful. <laughs> framework number two is about media buckets, okay? So when someone eventually finds you, or maybe they didn't even find you, you know that they are looking. They are looking because they want to work with you in one capacity or the other. You want to grow your business, so you're looking for clients. Um, then you can supercharge how that discovery works. This is what Media Buckets is all about, just to tie in together. The customer is on a journey. Media Buckets, is how we're going to make sure we plant ourselves in places where they will find us and where the finding will be meaningful, okay? That's what we're doing with framework two, okay? So this is also an existing framework, it's nothing, it's not revolutionary, but it's critical and important. It's all about paid media, earned media, and owned media, okay? I'm gonna spend a little bit of time and the image I've, I've, I've used here has a lot of clutter on it, but I just think it's, it's, it's important. So please bear with me as I kind of explain 
how they all tie in together in relation to where we're coming from, okay? So the very first one is paid media. And paid media is simply you paying to get your message to reach people, okay? It's as straightforward as that. You pay to reach people with your message. Now, there are many channels with which you can leverage paid media. I already talked about traditional media, right? TV, radio, billboards, but that's not the focus of our conversation today. We are talking about digital media. So even within digital media, we will talk about, you know, advertising on social media, advertising on Google, advertising through email marketing, paying an influencer, uh, you know, writing articles on a pub with a publisher. Anything you pay for so that people book, it's under paid media, but it's not the only way. Of course, there is also earned media. Now, earned media is really making sure your content or your message is worth sharing and talking about. This is possibly uh, the more common one when people think about digital, right? Is I'm posting on my social media page. And then the next thing that follows is, but it's not working. Nobody's liking, nobody's commenting. No, it just doesn't work. I post, 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 nothing, okay? We will also look at, you know, how to make it work today, okay? But first is earned media is about getting your content to be worth sharing and talking about. And then the third one is owned media. This is where you now share content on your own platforms. Now, whether or not other people share it, other people see it, um, is not really the focus. It's the fact that, when I eventually come home, i.e. go to your house, your living room is set up, your bedroom is set up nicely, the curtains are there, you know, it, it's how you want it to be. That's own media. So um, when people eventually find you, what they see that is curated on your own platform, that's, all, that's where own media comes into play. So that's not, it's not empty. Now, for earned media, uh, for paid media, I already talked about, you know, advertising on digital platforms. For earned media, I talked about your content being, what, being, you know, worth sharing. The extreme end of that is viral, right? That means people share it, share it, share it, share it, share it, and it goes viral. Yes, but it's it's not hard, it's not easy to achieve unless you want to do things that may not align with your values. Uh, you can you can hack that. But basically, it's about people mentioning, sharing, reposting, you know, commenting on the things that you're doing. And then when it comes to owned media, it's your own content platforms, your websites, your mobile site, your blog, your social media channels. Those are your uh, own media. Okay. Here's one thing I really want you to understand, which is it would be great if anytime you are trying to communicate, you pause and say, this thing that I'm about to say, this thing I'm about to put out about my business, about my career, where does it fit? What am I going to do with it? Does it have enough element to make it go viral. I don't want to use the word viral. To make it worth sharing, okay? Does it provide enough value? Does it have enough? It could be entertainment value. It could be inspirational value. It could be educational value. Uh, does it break the pattern? Does it arrest someone's attention and delivers enough within, you know, a short space of time that will make them say, wow, that's so amazing. I'm going to share this. Everybody, can, can, have you seen this? That's a good one. On the paid media one, the idea is this thing I'm about to put out and talk about and present, is it powerful enough and significant enough that I am willing to pay for the right audience to see it? And I'm going to show you that. That's the question you then ask. And then on the own media, again, it's if someone comes home now to us, what will they find? And have we properly curated the things that we want them to see? When you think about it this way, all of a sudden, you will not fall into the trap of constantly posting on Instagram. You wouldn't. You wouldn't fall into the trap of feeling the pressure to say there's nobody else on Facebook because it doesn't matter whether there's somebody on Facebook. It matters that when they Googled you, it's your Twitter account that they saw. So even if nobody's on Twitter, somebody may find your Twitter account just because they were searching. And if you didn't pay attention to that, your own media would be lacking to help you, again, 
create awareness or improve how you were considered or help you get conversions or even retain an existing client. This is how you start, you know, removing yourself from the rat race of content creation and being on social media and really strategically doing just enough to ensure that you project a cohesive and coherent business or as an individual, your skill set to whoever it is that might be watching and listening. Okay. So you don't have to be everywhere, but there is a way to be everywhere for the people that are really, really looking for you. All right, so let's look at a few examples on how to just bring this, um, <clears throat> to kind of tie this together. The first one would be uh, paid advertising. And I just wanna show you, I'm hoping you can see, if you're mobile, this may be a little bit small, I apologize. Um, <clears throat> but basically I'm gonna just run you through why paid media is also as important, even though it costs money actually everything costs money or time it's going to be one or the other money or time or both so while this one costs money it delivers results if it's well done very quickly very very quickly so that's what i'm going to show you now it's a video but i'm going to just talk over it so this is an example of me running paid media and i will just again just explain what is going on behind the scenes so I've gone on to my Facebook page and I'm, I'm leveraging Facebook for this. So Facebook is one of the easiest places to run paid media because you just click on boost your post and you click on boost post and there you go. Many people can start seeing what you are, uh, the message you're, you're sharing with them. First, sorry, a caveat is you need a Facebook page to be able to do this for your business or for your personal person. So this is my personal, uh, my personal brand's Facebook page, okay? It's different from my personal Facebook profile. Your business can also have a Facebook page. So ideally it will be a business or your brand. Okay, so this is my brand's Facebook page. It's also called Ibukun Itiju. And um, what I've done is just gone in and now I'm gonna run an ad. So just watch, so the video will play, but I will be speaking along. So I found a post, let me just pause in there. Sorry, so I found a post that I want to promote, okay? which is this post. So I wrote about something called quiet quitting. So I have a book on, um, you know, how to succeed at work if you have not found your passion. So basically, I'm looking to reach people that feel like there's something else they can go and do apart from what they're doing today. And I'm saying, well, while you're looking to find that thing, there is a way you can be extremely successful today that would also help you in the future. So that's what the book is about. And uh, so when there are conversations around career, I also have something I want to say about it. And so a few weeks ago, quiet quitting was trending. So I had my opinion about quiet quitting uh, because again, remember, I have a product or a service that ties it all together. All right, so, uh, and you can see the post is there. I've been reading about quiet quitting, X, 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 et cetera. And organically, 88 people liked it, 14 comments, one share. So that post seems to be resonating through earned media so it's on my own platform but on itself it's starting to gain some traction okay and then it and then after a while it just does it but if it's good enough for people to engage organically then i might as well just double down and get more people to see it that's where paid comes in that's when that's a signal for me to say i can put money on this one to get the message out because it seems to be working for the audience that i'm targeting okay so let's go through it so you just click on boost post and on facebook it would ask you to select the audience who do you want to target now when it's organic or when it's like on media you don't control anything but with paid you control it okay so there you can see like the people that are currently being targeted. And then I would just click on, okay, no, these are not the people that I want, for example. Um, and you can see a button there that says edit. When you click on edit, this is using Facebook ads, by the way, on mobile, you can choose your audience name. And I've just chosen, you know, test audience just because I did it for this, uh, for this conversation today. And uh, it would ask you to choose the locations. Now, you know where your business is. Again, if you're posting organically, you don't have these options really, but with ads, you can. So I can say, well, I have a store in Lagos. I have another store in Port Harcourt. I have another shop in Ibadan. So those are the three places that I want to target. I want people within these locations to see this post. Of course, in my own case, maybe I want career professionals within those locations to see it. 
So that's on location. The next step is characteristics. What else do you know about these people that you that you can use to tell Facebook to help you find them? So Facebook is just saying, are there other ways um, I can identify these people? Okay, that's where the characteristics kind of come into play. And you can browse some of the suggestions. So for example, if your business is in agriculture, or entertainment, or it's about family, or it's about wellness and fitness, food and drinks, hobbies. These categories are there. And Facebook will just use those signals to figure out who has been talking on Facebook, interacting with pages that makes it look like they are interested in that. Thing. Okay, so Facebook has its own algorithm to decide. So this is where you select, you know, some of those things that you feel or you know for sure your target audience are interested in. In, okay, so Facebook has the interest and you just pick the right interests. Um, if it's something about moms, for example, or parenting, if you sell toys, um, here you go. If you are a wedding photographer or you are into catering for weddings or you are into, I don't know, solutions for family, this is like where you get those signals to be able to say to Facebook, these are the kind of people I am looking for that I want to share this message to. Okay, so once you've done selecting your <clears throat> the characteristics, you save that, <clears throat> and then it will go back to the age range. This is also a good point, right? Remember, I talked about you know who's available, so you can say, well, I know the people that would have the disposable income to buy my product or service are between the ages of thirty three and forty five, or thirty one and fifty one. You choose that. It's also a good way. Now you've selected that, and somewhere below that, you can see the audience definition the audience will start changing from a million to 700k to 800k to 1.5 million just here you know as you make those selections okay and then you can also select gender is this solution for men or women or all or it doesn't matter again um that's where you can also make those uh selections and then finally you save it your audience has been selected now and then you go to uh budget how much do you want to spend on a daily basis or um <clears throat> throughout the duration of the campaign so the campaign is like you know over seven days and i want to spend five dollars per day or ten dollars per day um you you choose okay and you can have i think you can even start with like one dollar per day i think that's the minimum so a uh, dollar per day is the minimum but not 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 too much and you can also see how many people you're going to reach so about between 493 and 1400 people per day okay and here you go so all the way to when it starts, how many days is going to run from, um, you know, where you want your ad to be placed, whether on Facebook or Messenger. Then you add your payment details because, of course, Facebook has to be able to charge your account or your card uh, so that they can get their money for paying. And you click on boost post and you are done. And Facebook will go and find those people for you and show you the message that you have for them. Okay, so that's paid advertising, very straightforward. Uh, but remember, it's about, you know, how the, the, the advantage of paid advertising is that you are in control of who sees your message. And if you're very clear on who your target audience is, you can easily run it so that the right people will see your message. Okay, so that's it on pay. Let's look at an example for earned media, okay? This is uh, a TikTok post. Um, so for those of you that are spending a lot of time on TikTok, including myself, uh, or Reels on social media, this is another way. Remember I talked about earned media, meaning that you have something or you created a particular type of content that people just want to talk about and share, and it's just so useful or meaningful or entertaining. It depends, whichever way. This is an example of that. Let's see how this um, works. Now, I might have to reshare because this has this needs volume. So just give me a few seconds so that I can share my sound. Okay. I'm going to show you one of the most Instagrammable places in London you never knew existed. Start in Piccadilly Circus and face the big screen. Walk down this road. When you get to McDonald's, Great Windmill Street, you're going to want to turn up the street. When you get to be at one, keep walking. Halfway up the road, you'll see Smith's Court. And we walk down here. And say hello to London's most beautiful little courtyard. 
the best coffee house in London. Not open on Sundays, so I had to get a pret. It's also home to this incredible dried florist, which actually happens to be mine. Ah, come and visit us in the courtyard. Okay, that video got about a million views. Um, over a thousand five hundred comments, and people were just talking about how he started, how he directed them, and how it was such a great ad. But there was no budget spent, and he still achieved the million view just because of how the person created the content. Okay, it it was even I loved it. I loved them like wow. If I have a chance, I will go visit her that shop and say hey i found you on tiktok it was so amazing i just want to come and say i'm coming to say hello really that's how good i thought it was but it was earned so thought putting thought to your content can really help you more reach for that particular content okay so again it's not about this is just one video that achieved this much our other videos, our other videos, they did okay, but definitely nowhere near. So again, one video and we're still talking about it. I'm talking about it today just because it had so much about it that it earned its own media reach, impressions and engagement. Okay. Now I want to show you one final example. This is also an example of earning 10 comments, 3000 views. Actually, it's a video that I shot. And this is, I want to tie this in because this is as boring in a way as it can get, but it's still got 3,600 views, okay? And this is what it is. That was a reel I posted a few weeks ago. I was uh, conducting a training uh, in Eckert. And um, I thought, okay, this is what I do. Like, if again, I talk, I, I do trainings, I do consulting. I might as well just curate whatever I'm doing and also share it on my social media platforms. But here's a bit of difference. This is where the tactics come in. And I'll share one or two with you. So, so social media platforms now allow you to do one or two things. The first is you can find trend in music both on tiktok and instagram reels and use that in your video which that means when people search for that music they can find your video so that's one way to kind of hack that earned media that's number one the second one is transitions okay so instagram and tiktok also have uh, templates that you can use so you take a few um, uh, videos, five seconds, six seconds, uh, a few pictures, you combine them together, put a nice music behind it, you post it, and there you go. Before you know it, if you do it in a creative way, if you have a nice message behind it, a nice song that might be trending behind it, people will also find your product, your service, they'll find you, and they can interact with you if it makes sense to them. One final example I'm going to put on Media Paquettes and then we'll move on is just someone, you know, as I was kind of preparing today, this idea came to mind of how someone can also just leverage this combination together. And the example that came to mind is say an entertainer or a comedian or an artist who, uh, or a consultant or a coach who travels to a different country, okay? So let's pick an entertainer, travels to a different country and is thinking of, okay, paid media, earned media, own media, what do I need to do? So posts on his own social media page to say, hey, I'll be in this country at so, so, so time and so, so, so day. Uh, I'm going there, if you're around, you know, let's hang out or, you know, say hi to me, I'm in your city, you know how it goes, right? Then he gets there and he thinks, okay, what do I need to do to create earned media? And he goes, okay, you know what? First, I'm going to start with paid media. So remember what I showed you before. Now he can do a nice skit, a nice song, uh, a nice reel like this, and say, the only people I want to see this reel, I'm going to spend $10 over the next three days. And this content will only go to people that are in the city that I'm in. So they will only go to uh, Paracord, or they will only go to people that are in Essex in London, or, you know, I don't know. Miami in the US or even the county, you can set that. And so he creates his content and in the content is just saying, and now one thing else is on Facebook. So as I said, it's an entertainer. He says, hey, if your birthday is in October, if October, if you're, if you were born in October, 
just drop me a message on Facebook or on Instagram or wherever. Um, tell me your birth date and I will show up as a surprise for you, okay? And I will come and sing a song for you or bring a gift or something like that. And then he creates that content, just speaks into his phone and posts this on Facebook and then run this paid advertising. Now, on Facebook, he can also select people that have birthdays in October. That's That could be one of your targeting options. So you select, so that means the only people that will see that ad of you saying, I'm gonna show up and surprise you or your friends is people that have birthdays in October. So let's assume that he runs that for $10, 1,500 people see it, and only three people responded. And then he went to those three people's birthdays with his camera and a crew or himself, and he sings for them, does that thing, you know, takes a few pan out selfies and all of that. He then comes back on social and creates earned media. First, the people he saw will be able to talk about it. He has a video content that is gonna share and say, hey, this is what I did, I surprised this person, look at the joy on your faces. And so all of a sudden, nobody knows you ran that paid media ad because you didn't see it because it's your birthday in October. <laughs> all of a sudden, what we're seeing is the earned media just because of the content he's created. So that's just one way to show you how thinking within this bucket as a framework can unlock new strategies, new opportunities for you on how you engage or how you leverage digital to push your business forward. Okay, I hope that is useful. Let's move on to the next one. Someone says, I can't see your screen. So please, can everybody else see my screen just to be sure? Hopefully I've not been talking to myself because I can't even see myself anymore. Would anyone just want to confirm that you can see me and you can hear me? Okay, you can see me and you can hear me. All right, great. Thank you, thank you so much. So that's media buckets and that's framework number two. So let's go to the third one. Framework number three, it's about the sales journey. So we started with the customer journey, which is the customer doing what they want to do and how we can plug into that. We then talked about the media buckets, which is now leveraging the tools available to you to whether on your own profile as on media or as paid media. The third framework is about how you now intentionally say, if someone finds me, this is exactly what I want them to do. This is exactly how I want them to move through my sales process or my sales journey. That's what this is about. And if this is, seems like a lot, I'm trying to make it not overwhelming. That's why I've kind of put it in this mini buckets. And that's why we're not going also teaching just tactics. I, I'm hoping that you, this foundation is something you can build on um, even after today's training. So this is framework number three and it's called the sales journey. I'm gonna play for you the introduction uh, at my TEDx talk. Unfortunately, the volume was, the sound was not very good, but I have put a um, subtitles on it. So if you're not, if you can't hear it properly, you can just read the text on the screen. It's about a minute long and it's just the intro. And then I will kind of explain uh, <clears throat> what happened after. I am the epitome of elegance, a good male specimen, a well-built product. What makes me special? Well, I have two parts to my head, a bald part and a hairy part. It shows you I'm very versatile. I have a big nose that allows me to take in a lot of oxygen to my brain. It fuels my superior intelligence. If you unbox me, you will find carefully arranged six packs of muscles that are still trying to come of age. <laughs> I, I have a perfect companion. I don't know her by name, but she's the one for whom I'm made. She's female. Um, she's digitally savvy. She's connected. She goes on social media platforms. Her relationship status is single. Or sometimes just complicated. She's sophisticated and very well educated. If that is you, then I have a question for you. Will you marry me? <laughs> okay, now that's what most brands do when they take the bold step of going into the world of digital marketing. 
propose this thing. Okay, else. cool. That's exactly what you're not going to do. You're not going to do that. You're not going to propose to strangers anymore. But because of the lure of that digital is quick, digital is fast, you know, many times we just want to say, hey, buy from me, buy, buy, buy. And we skip everything else that has come before or everything else that should have come before. Before you go on one knee, so the, the whole essence of my TEDx talk is don't propose to a stranger. And then I gave a four-part framework different from this, but we're going to go into just that one, which is what framework three is all about or a first step process um, of how you don't, you should not be proposing to strangers. By the time you go on one knee, you have built a relationship. You have known the person. Before you say, will you marry me? If you don't want it to end in premium tears <laughs> or a slap, <laughs> there are things that should have happened before so that when it's time to ask for the sale or to ask for the hand, um, there is a higher chance that the person will say yes. That's what sales journey is all about and how you can make it work for you. So what are the steps? Four steps, it's attract, engage, convert, and delight. Now, if you've been following, which I know you have been, you will realize that it's almost like a compressed version that directly meets what the customer journey is because they are looking and so you want to attract. Because they are considering, you want to engage. Because they want to buy, you want to convert. Because they want to be retained, you want to delight. Okay, so while they are going through that process, you are going through this process as a business owner or as a career professional. Okay, so first one, attract. You need to find ways to become a magnet to the people you are called to serve. It can be hard for them to find you, but you need to become a magnet. What can you put out there that would attract them to you, okay? Uh, food for thought. The second one is engage. Now, digital gives you an opportunity to respond. This is also one of the impressive things about digital. You can ask people to chat with you on WhatsApp, for example. You can ask them to send you a DM. You can respond to comments. Other traditional you know, marketing methods or channels don't just have that capability. It's something that digital has, but I've, as I've said here, use it very well and use it wisely. Things can go sideways very quickly, okay? However, it shouldn't stop you from really leveraging it to your advantage because your ability to engage, and this is also where you can use digital tools. I have a friend, uh, Sami, who has a platform called Michael, which is just a CRM, or you can use any CRM where when someone engages with you or you can automate your WhatsApp uh, for business, it responds back to them and says, oh, if you would like to do X, press one, or you can do that on Facebook, or you can just find somebody who would just be on it to engage with people because when they are ready to buy, when they're ready to serve, when they are ready to, you know, to be served, that's when they reach out. If you delay, it also says something about your readiness to really, uh, you know, serve them. So, Digital gives you an opportunity to engage. Use it very well and use it wisely. And then convert is don't be afraid to ask for the sale. I think for many people that are not salespeople, uh, we have a way of uh, sabotaging our sales effort. Let me put it that way, even though sabotage is a bit strong. But we, we just sometimes um, let the sale go away. And we're all guilty. I'm guilty of it um, for sure. But... Um, that's why this reminder is that, that to convert, when someone is ready to buy, don't give them more work to do, okay? Someone says, hey, I would like to get something. Say, well, go to our website. It is there. Well, while they are loading your website, it doesn't look quick. The baby starts crying. And while they are loading their website, someone calls them. And then they forget about it. And then the sale is gone forever. And the next time they remember, it's with their friend. And then a friend recommends someone else and then to go with that person. And that's it, you lost the sale. You lost someone that could have a huge lifetime value to your business, okay? So when it's time to convert, don't be afraid. Just ask for the sale and remove frictions that will make it you know, inconvenient for them. They, your card payment doesn't work, ask them for transfer. Um, I, I don't know, just, but again, that's why this is here, that when you think about the sales journey, it's about what you are doing to attract the person, right? Have your, have your invoices ready? Send it, send it to them via email. Ask for their email address. When they buy from you the first time or when they interact with you the first time and you feel like where you are chatting with them is a public place, for example, within a comment 
uh, or you met at an event, you can say, you can ask and say, let's take this, what's your email address? And I will schedule the time. Or I will send you the invoice via email, or I will, you know, whatever it is that you need to do to ask for the sale, please do it, okay? Because uh, people may not figure it out all by themselves. I've heard things like, yeah, but the link is in my bio. There's nothing that stops you from copying that link and sending it again on WhatsApp. Uh, yeah, but, you know, my account details is on the screen, or my account details is there. Again, these things, you can make it a lot easier. When you want to serve people, you have to remove you know, frictions from them. And then finally is delight. Turn your customers into advocates by delighting them, okay? This has to be intentional. It is really difficult to get a new customer. It is more difficult to get a new customer that will retain an existing one. And the existing ones, when they turn, when they become advocates, and we'll talk about that in the next framework, you need them to attract new people that are like them. So that's the point. You actually need them to attract new people that are like them. In a simple way, there is also a much more technical reason behind it. So there is something on Facebook and on Google, if you're into digital marketing or paid advertising, where these platforms can say to you, send us details of your customers, people that have actually paid you money. And we will go and find people that look like them. So it's not just about saying, I need someone, or I'm looking for someone who's interested in X, Y, Z, and is within the ages of and lives in Lagos. No, that's one way. But there is another way where Facebook says, don't worry about all of that. You just send us the people that have paid you money before in the past that are your existing customers. And we will, our algorithm would profile those people, things you can never know about them, and then go to find them. Okay. So that's um, <clears throat> on the sales journey, these four steps. And then the final framework is on content marketing, okay? Now it's all about, now we, again, we started with the customer journey. What are they doing? And how are they going about their day? And then we looked at the buckets. How do I reach them? Paid, owned, earned. And then we look at your sales journey. What have you put in place to take them from attracting them to converting and delight them? Something that ties all of this together is content. Now, you might have heard this a lot, a lot of times, you know, how do we create content? What kind of content should I be creating and stuff like that? So I've also included this. There are just three things to, to, have in, to have in mind. Top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel. All it means is content at the top of the funnel, they help you create awareness. So there are things you create or content you put out that just gets people to know more about you. How you want to do this, you can use any of the existing frameworks to push that content out. The middle, and then this is just examples, social media posts, videos, images, website content, blogs, any of the things that you're already familiar with. But here's where it comes very interesting. You also need middle of the funnel content, content that helps when customers are evaluating options. OK, so it's not enough to just create a general awareness. Some of them are saying, who should I go with? And this is where you want to be a little bit go the extra mile and say, well, um, I can give you a discount or there's a quiz or there's a webinar. For example, this webinar you were on today, if it was within a business context, is a middle of the funnel uh, content, right? Because you've signed up logged in and showed that extra intent that you want to be part of a you know a christian family for young professionals to learn how to leverage digital you've shown strong intent for you to be here today you're not just not someone who's browsing you've come in okay so that's middle of the funnel content that full gospel businessmen's fellowship have put together and the bottom of the funnel will be for them to then say hey and we will i will be saying hey if you're not born again this is a great time, if you like this family, to give your life to Jesus and also become a member of Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship so that you can be part of this movement, right? So at the start, they talked about the books, right? Also at the start, they shared the vision, which is everywhere, which means, again, top of the funnel, we're in the middle of the funnel right now, and there will be a call to action to take us into the bottom of the funnel to really make it work. And you should be doing that in your business as well. What else can I create and put out there that shows that when someone is ready to really take the next step, they have everything they need to make that decision? It's a free trial. Is it how to? Is it a spec sheet? Is it customer testimonial? So earlier I talked about, you know, 
your existing customers and how you need to treat them well. Because if you do, they will give you testimonials that would help you convert other customers. So if you're not collecting testimonials in your business, this is a really nice call to action for you to say, do that bit of extra. Oh, I can add something more to you if you would just send us a message to say how our product has been very useful for you so that we can use it on our social media pages. That's it. So you delight them so that they can send good feedback and you turn that feedback into a content that will help you close other customers. So that's the fourth framework. Now, I wanted to share this case study with you, but in the interest of time, I will skip it. Okay, I will skip it. I will skip it. Uh, but though, actually, you know what? I'll just talk about it. So I did a dance video. If you haven't seen it on my Instagram page, and it's probably my most viral video to date. It hasn't reached a million. But 177,000 views, 233 comments, and it was my earned media. Okay, I'm not gonna play. It was my earned media, and then I picked it, and then I created an ad from it. So I used that earned media to then create an ad that I then paid for. And I mean, this is impressive. If you're into paid advertising, I was getting 7.67% CTR click-through ratio, like, or the click-through rate, sorry. 7.6 is insane. Like when I say insane, sorry, but like it's it's huge um, for the audience that I was seeing and for the amount of money that I was spending. But again, just seeing how kind of moving through, like put content out to see which one sticks, and then turn that into an ad so that you can target the people you want to see it. And remember, you can see the ad even that says, after I discovered how to find my passion the easy way, I started dancing. So which means like your after state where you discover how to find your passion is that you dance. That, that's just like, you know, the, the story within the ad. But again, just mixing those three buckets, right? Earned, owned, and paid uh, to really move your business or your consulting firm or your career forward. Okay. All right. So that, that, that. So that's it. That's it for today. Um, I'm going to be wrapping up soon or even now. What have we talked about? We talked about first the customer journey um, and just knowing that they are on a journey and they are going about their day looking for something they don't even know they have a problem. But you has a solution to a problem. So with your media bucket strategy, you would explain the problem to them so that whoever has that problem can be attracted to you and then give them a solution so that they can start considering you, okay? That's what that part two means. And then the third one is really just about the sales journey and how you can leverage digital to move people from attract, engage, convert, and delight. And using digital tools, CRM tools, artificial intelligence tools, chatbots, you know, um, easy invoicing, easy payment, anything. Um, if you are a servicing people, you can create like template cheat sheets, for them, leveraging not just for marketing, every digital opportunity that is available to you to make you servicing them or working in that industry or working for that company a delight, okay? And then the fourth part is really content marketing. How do you create content that will help at the top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, and bottom of the funnel to really serve you and to grow your business and your personal brand and your career, all right? Great, thank you very much. Um, that's it for today. We're going to go into uh, uh, Q&A uh, shortly. But before we do that, as I said, really the first call to action is this is still a Christian platform. Um, and uh, and it's such a great family to be part of. And one thing that really binds us together is the love of Christ. So um, I would like to say, hey, if you've liked everything you've seen so far really the first step or the very next step if you have not given your life to jesus is to do that so um if you haven't given your life to jesus and you are here today i would like to just say a word of prayer with you before we go into q a because then i can answer all of your questions um if that is you you can raise your hand both uh using any of the tools here or also just where you are, God sees you, even if I can't. And um, we can just say a word of prayer. Please let's bow our heads in prayer. If today is that day you say, well, I have a message to the world and I want God to really help me crystallize that message, leveraging the tools that we've learned about today to take that message forward. But I want to do it in a way that is pleasing to God to be you know, uh, an ambassador for Jesus 
where I work in my business and the people that I interact with, then this is a great time, you know, to do that. Father, we thank you for today. Um, we give you praise because it's such a wonderful day. Um, you have brought us together. You know each and every person that is here today. And for those that you are drawing near to you, the Bible says, blessed is the person that you cost to draw near onto you. So that step forward that they are taking right now is a step of blessing. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will receive them in Jesus' name. And if that person is you, you can just say a simple word of prayers after me and say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity to give my life to you today. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will accept me, forgive me of my sins. I accept Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior today and forevermore. All my sins are forgiven and I've become a vessel of honor to use in your house. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. That's it. That's it. There will be things in the chat on next steps, you know, on how you can still continue to interact with the full gospel team and um, how they will reach out back to you to really disciple you. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, we would like to uh, go to Q&A and I will also hand over to Mr. Dedeji to help us just coordinate that um, just in case. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, it sounds like we need to have a, a part two because it looks like you weren't able to touch a couple of things, but it was a very good session. Um, thank you so much. So now we'll go to the Q&A. And what I don't know is we we'll would have enough time tonight to, to answer all the questions. Um, but we will try. Let's try. <laughs> we'll try. We'll try. Um, so um, some comments, what an enlightenment. Um, so the question is, what is the best platform to run ads or get customers as a service provider in the construction section? Uh, that's from Timili Luau Shodi. I'm tempted to see come for consulting, but we'll answer the question. <laughs> Okay, yeah, no, I'll, I'll answer it. It's fine. Yeah. On the platform of, of Full Gospel, oh, it's, free, it's free today. It's free today in this session. Okay, so, yeah. um, so, so uh, for, for a service provider in the construction industry, um, it, it is a, a bit challenging uh, because, again, I've had a privilege to be, at least to, to do something in that, in that industry. However, when we look at the funnel, right, where can you take them up to? before you then say, wow, okay, this person now knows about me and we can take the conversation forward. Best platform, it's always difficult to say there is one best platform, but Google platforms, Facebook platforms, and also LinkedIn could be really good ones depending on how you really do your targeting. Here's what I will say. The person that is going to be the decision maker is probably going to be online using one of these platforms. So actually, it's about figuring out who that person may be, what else they may be interested in, not just construction. Yes, construction is one thing, but what other areas, you know, uh, will they be interested in? And if you can target that person with the right message, you then see what sticks. So any of these platforms, Facebook is probably still the biggest one, to be honest. Um, and then Instagram is also an opportunity, but I say LinkedIn as well, if you're not currently doing it now, ads on LinkedIn is very expensive. So LinkedIn, not for ads, but organically Facebook and Instagram will still be my bet for that. Thank, thank you very much. Um, other comments. Thank you for this insightful presentation. So somebody's taking you up. You promised to share a link with us concerning your book. That's Dr. Agi. <laughs> I will do before we go. It's there, actually. It's the next slide. So it's on the slide already. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Then I see Mr. Frank Foreman. You have your hand uh, raised. Uh, Mr. Frank. <laughs> Mr. Ola Williams says, I'm 53, and I feel so much a part of this generation. Sorry, that, well. that must have been an error. Yes. Yeah, sorry, that must have been an error. Okay. All right, Mr. Frank. All right. Um, do we have any other question? Any other question? Well, I have a question, and my question is, when can we do part two? <laughs> and I like to ask what everybody is here. <laughs> so, oh, anytime, so, anytime. Yeah, we're here. I saw on your profile, uh, Web 3.0, blockchain, 
Um, there's a lot of conversation around that. I think it would be good to um, have some enlightenment and, you know, and um, some benefits of, you know, um, insight into those specific areas. Okay, so, uh, I'm great. Happy. No, no problem. We're available by God's grace. And it's something I'm super excited to talk about as well. Of course, today I've decided to stick to the foundations that I think will be more useful for everybody. And if there is a specific conversation around Web3 and blockchain and NFTs, ooh, let's do it as well. So I'm hoping that some of the time we'll be able to do it. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, okay. One more. Yeah, so I see someone saying, what did you say to the middle of life people going about, what do you say to the middle of life people about going digital? Oh, great. Um, well, middle of life, let's start with middle of the funnel. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it, this is the best time. There is no difference with um, when it comes to digital, really. You, you're bringing a lot of experience, you know, a lot of experience, which means that when you attempt or interact with these digital platforms, there are so many things you can already see that may work, that may not work, um, that you just enjoy using. So what you bring is experience. What digital platforms bring is the newest way of doing things. And when you merge those two things together, you will already be ahead of people that only know digital but don't have the experience. And that, and I see that on a daily basis, right? Because that's a unique selling point. Now, some of those digital platforms, we make it look like they are difficult to learn. This is how I know they're not difficult because the three-year-olds and the four-year-olds and the two-year-olds who have not learned anything all of a sudden know how to use these things. So, so clearly um, there is a shortcut to them and it's just about sometimes spending more time, spending more time with it, but also go narrow. If there's something, a digital platform or a digital tool that is already within your area of expertise, that's where I'll say you start. It doesn't have to be Facebook or Instagram. There are digital transformation happening in HR, for example, in recruitment, for example, in construction using 3D models, um, you know, uh, in different industries, right, in supply chain. So social media is, is the front end and is the simpler stuff. Each industry has its own digital transformation agenda. That's where I would say you should start because it's already an area where you have so much expertise is now finding out what the digital tools are within that industry that you can already start to play with. Okay. And finally, uh, thank you very much. Finally, I have Dr. Agni saying, Mr. Ibuko, why did you have the sales journey preceding content marketing? Just curious. That's an interesting one. Wow. Okay. I debated for almost 15 minutes on where I'm going to, what you just asked me was something I spent so much time thinking about. What swung it for me was the sales journey is driven by the business. So if you're very clear on your sales journey, then you will know exactly how to match the content. That's why I put it there. If you start with the content, then you would have created a content without necessarily knowing what role that content will play in your own sales journey strategy. So if I know that, okay, I need content that would delight, I can go and create content that would delight rather than just creating content first before figuring out where it fits in within those four steps. But it, I actually thought about it as well uh, for this. So that's why I put it just ahead of it. Thank you very much. So before you share that, um, before you share that- The link, um, yes. That we're all waiting for, I would just like to quickly round up the meeting and that will be the final thing we do if it's okay. Um, all right. Um, I will you take announcements. We have just a minute or two to go. And um, this is Full Gospel Business Men's Fellowship. And what we are doing tonight is the first in a series of meetings um, ahead of our you know, annual convention that happens in November. So two weeks from now, we'll be having another conversation like this. Then two weeks after another like this, then we'll have a grand meeting. And um, there'll be a physical meeting here in Lagos. And it's really going to be awesome. Um, so I'd like to encourage us to stay tuned um, and um, be part of the conversation. Um, the annual convention comes up in November and um, registration details will also be shared with us after this meeting. Um, but we have your data 
and we'll take it and come back to you with the next session uh, that we'll be having. Uh, before we take the last item tonight, which is the closing prayer uh, by Mr. Adola Musodo, I would like to request that um, Mr. Ibukun um, drops the 3D, the gift. So you can share your screen, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, I will do that straight away. And um, Dr. Agni says solid arguments. Great, thanks. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay, so here is the here is the link. I'm gonna put it in the chat as well. But basically, I've also put what you're gonna get. So this is my book called Passionless, Find Your Passion, um, How to Succeed at Work, Even If You Have Not Found Your Passion. I am so, this is like my own personal framework into how to achieve career success. It works for everyone, but targeted towards mid-career professionals, earlier mid-career professionals. You get a book, you get a course. I also did some interviews with uh, some of the people I respect in the industry. I had a... Uh, um, a vice president at The Economist. I had a managing director at Morgan Stanley. I had um, one of the top 150 HR global leaders in the world, uh, who is Yemi Fasho, Mr. Yemi Fasho. You might know him. I also have uh, um, in Kemp Delim, who sits on the board of Stan Chatter, um, Stan Big Bank, sorry, as well. So had four conversations with them about what they think, you know, about really achieving career success. So that's everything you're going to get. It's worth about 90 something dollars. It's currently selling for eight as a discount, but you're gonna get it, all of it for free. So there's nothing you're gonna pay. So, um, but here's the important part. I am going to, um, I've stopped sharing because I want to copy the, the code that you need and I'll put it in the chat. So the link is where you go to and the discount code is the code that you are going to use to get it. And once you put that in, um, you should be fine. So that's the link, and the discount code is full gospel NGC. And then you just fill in the form, put the discount code, it will not charge you anything, and you will be fine. If you're looking to get in touch with me, I think my email address I didn't put, but uh, my website is bookmonitude.com. And there is a way to get in touch with me from there. I think. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much.